Finally, a Thunderbolt hub and SSD enclosure for your M4 Mac Mini. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So we have a good one today. Now in the comments, a whole bunch of people are asking me, can you actually find us an M4 Mac Mini, kind of a, a hub with an SSD enclosure you know, built into it, and make it be Thunderbolt or 40 gigabit per second speeds on the actual SSD? And I think I found one, and I'm gonna do a product showcase on this one. This is why Quizlab, and I'm gonna go into this in a second. Um, now I'm gonna have all the information you need here in the timeline down there. You can skip to wherever you wanna go, but just watch the whole video, because this one's important to know the context of everything and kind of how this got better, and, uh, and then we'll wrap up the video at the end. Okay, so a while back, maybe two months ago, I did another video on a very similar kind of dock SSD enclosure, and actually I have them sitting right here. Now, you're gonna notice two boxes, and I'll explain that in a second, but just the thing to note about these, these were only 10 gigabit per second, the SSD enclosures, so you were only able to get speeds around like 900 megabytes per second or so, and people just wanted more speed. Now don't get me wrong, like 900 megabytes per second is fast enough for almost everyone out there, for, for average people, right? But a lot of people are requesting that they want that 40 gigabit per second enclosure built into this hub, and so we found one. So here it is right here, and I'm gonna show you really close-ups of this in a second. This is actually the Quizlab UH60U4, and it's got similar ports to these other ones, but there are some differences and some pretty big differences, and I'm gonna get through all of that with you. Now, a little bit of context when we're actually reviewing these. So before I even talk about these, the M4 Mac Mini, in a video that I'll maybe put up right here, you can take a look at this video, I showcased on the M4 Mac Mini has an issue with really shielding and stuff around it. So any type of metallic objects you put around it, in a lot of cases, is gonna affect your Wi-Fi speed. So either it's obviously gonna go down just a little bit, and it's not just so much these hubs here, but it can be any, any hub, like a normal SSD enclosure, or any, you know, even be a keyboard or something. So that was an issue with the M4 Mac Mini, and not so much these but obviously these are made out of metal and you know I, that's why we're gonna have to check it today. All right, that's why they sent me two of these way back then because when I actually did the review of these, the first one they sent me, it came with this white inside and you can see it, I'll show you a picture of it. And that actually didn't do the best job at shielding you know, that Wi-Fi loss basically. And uh, so they ended up sending me another revised version right after that. And that one actually did a much better job. You can kind of see the gold inside. They kind of made some changes to the metals and the all alloys around it and stuff. And it did make a change. So the first one actually didn't, you know, it, it affected it quite a bit. The second one over here affected Wi-Fi speeds. Like, I don't know what it was, like 15% or something. So we want to definitely check out the new one over here because they said they made some modifications to this and I'll get into that in a second, but it's important to note that they said that they made some good changes to this one versus the other two. A couple last things to note here is if you're using Ethernet, it's not going to affect it if you plug a cable into it because we're not talking about Wi-Fi loss there. And also just note that it's not just the Quizlab's fault of doing this. These things aren't the only things affecting it. Again, it's any type of enclosure, any type of keyboard, anything out there can be affecting it. So overall, it's just how good these companies can do to shield that or help shield the internals here so it doesn't affect the M4 Mac Mini. And that's actually what we're looking at here. And then here we are. So Quizlab actually offered to send me right here. This is the brand new version of it right here. And again, this is the 40 gigabit per second model of it as well. So when they offered to send it out to me, I'm like, sure, I'm gonna test it. I'll test the Wi-Fi. I'll test the SSD speeds. And we'll see how fast this thing really is right here. Now, if you look online over here, right on Amazon, you can get this for around 100 bucks. It's not a bad deal. But if you look even closer, a lot of times it's gonna be on sale here. It's gonna have a 10% coupon. So around 89 bucks, give or take a couple bucks there. But you can see it says 40 gigabit per second, um, you know, SSD enclosures going to have a hub and a stand. And I'll show you, you know, as we're talking about this, it's basically, well, we might as well tell you right now. Here, here it is right here. I'll show you some pictures of it. But it's an aluminum hub stand or whatever you want to call it. Um, and it does have some ports on it, which we'll get into. But the claim to fame of this is it kind of sits up the Mac Mini on, on the top of it there. It's got a little cutout here for your fingers. So you can go ahead and turn it on and off. It's got an SSD built into the bottom of it, which we'll talk about in a second. But overall, I think it's a very fair price if you can get it for that under 100 bucks. Um, these are about where all these kind of come in. So that's not the issue. The price is very fair. And like I just mentioned on the bottom of it, you can actually unscrew this little plate here and you can actually go ahead and put an M.2 SSD in there. Now, the, the ones that you actually wanna do, I'll, I'll put up a little list here of the ones that they recommend here. You can go ahead and pause it if you wanna see what that list is. I'm actually, for my testing, let me go ahead and grab this. I'm gonna be using the 990 Evo Plus right here and this is gonna be the one terabyte version and I'll show you some pictures of this actually in here. So this is the drive that I chose to use and it's actually, you know, I, I would say it performed pretty well. And we're gonna show you Black Magic tests, 100 gig speed, or 100 gigabyte data test on there as well, moving data back and forth. But that's all there is to this, you know, as far as what they did here is they actually added that compartment to the bottom. 
Now, a few more of these changes that came directly from QuizLab, and I'll kind of read it here. They basically stated that they used full aluminum metal instead of a hybrid metal mix in order to minimize its electrical interference with the Mac Mini's Wi-Fi signal. Now, I'm not an engineer. It sounds good on paper, right? It's, it's a more pure metal. They've gone through some testing with it, less interference, and that's definitely what we're going to test out here in a second. Now, a couple other changes to the hub as well. They did a couple small changes here. Now, on the front of it, it has two USB-A. Now, these are going to be USB-A 2.0, so they're really not going to be, you know, the fastest. They're going to be more for, like, plugging in a keyboard or some kind of a device like that, right? Keyboard and, and a mouse or something. So that's on the front of it. On the back of it, it's going to have um, a USB-C port back there. Well, actually, it's going to be a Thunderbolt more, you know, it's going to have to be something fast because that's going to what's going to connect the SSD into your computer. But this is the host port here, but it's a USB-C style port. And then in the middle, it's going to have a USB-A again, 2.0. So again, it's not the fastest. It's just going to be for plugging in stuff, little stuff like keyboards and stuff like that. But then it's going to have an audio jack on the back as well, you know, obviously. So if, if you don't like the, the feature on the Mac Minis where it's on the front now, they actually went ahead and put it on the back. So now you have an option of actually plugging in your headphones either to the front or the back or your speakers. And I think that's actually a good change with this hub because a lot of people complained about that on the Mac Mini. And this hub would fix that for them. Now, the one thing they did remove is the SD card readers on this one. And I think it, I'm not sure what it has to do with, but you don't actually need to plug this into a power source. So it might've been like a power draw issue or something. So, but the star of the show here is you're not really getting it for that. You're getting it for some little extra ports here and there. You're still gonna have all of your Mac Minis ports as well, except one that plugs into this. And then on the back, you're gonna have the audio jack back there. You get the stand here, obviously. But the, you know, the star of the show is the 40 gigabit per second enclosure on the back of it, hands down. That's what you're really paying for. Okay, let's get into the testing now. So we're gonna do some Wi-Fi tests on this and I'm gonna show you the results of that. That's number one. Then we're gonna do a black magic test on the speed of this drive. And again, I'm using the Evo here. So this is gonna be the Samsung 990 Evo Plus one terabyte drive. It's a very fast drive. Um, I think it's rated for up to like 7,000 on paper as far as what it says, you know, when you buy it, but obviously we're going through a hub and it's only Thunderbolt four speeds. You're not gonna get that, but you're gonna, you should get somewhere in the 3000s, right? If this is actually gonna work accordingly. Um, you can go ahead and choose. I'm gonna show you the screen one last time here. Go ahead and pick any of these drives you want right here. Um, those are the drives that they actually recommend for this enclosure. I'm only testing one, mind you. So after we do that though, then we're gonna do a 100 gigabyte data test as well to show you, see how long it takes to transfer 100 gigabytes of data and does anything slow down considerably. I think that's really important to get that kind of test in here as well on something so, you know, something like this because obviously when you're, when you're doing, when you want that speed, you wanna do more longer transfers. I mean, I think 100 gigs is a good amount just because for me, at least, I'm not doing much more of that a lot, but a lot of times, you know, a lot of times I'm doing 50 gigabytes, you know, 70 for all my projects. So I think it's a really good test. Okay, let's talk about the Wi-Fi speeds now. Here's the test I conducted. So I did five different tests here. The blue bars are gonna be with, without the, the actual dock attached to the Mac Mini, so completely not attached. And then the red is when I attached this dock right to the Mac Mini with the SSD in it. What are the differences we got? Here's megabytes per second over here. So you can see that, you know, obviously it dropped off a little bit on each of these tests. We were getting, I don't know the exact numbers here, but I'll get to the averages in a second. But you can see over the test, some of them are closer than others. And the average here without the hub was about uh, 284 4.6 right here and then the average with the hub here is 268 0.2. So you can see the difference there. It's not that much of a difference. I did the math on that. That's a little, I mean, I think that was like less, like right around 6%. So you're only losing about 6% here with this new metal, you know, the metal alloy that they actually selected to use this. And so far out of all of the ones I tested before, remember this one was like, you know, the best one over here was maybe 15%. This one did much, much better. So they actually did solve that. And let me just explain that any hub you put next to it, any keyboard you put next to your Mac mini, it's going to lose about that amount anyway. So it's doing about as good as it can do here. Now, you know, things are going to vary depending on what you have in your room, how far you are from your router, if you have other objects around like monitors and everything else, because the Mac Mini is very sensitive. But I thought this, you know, if you look at this graph again, I think this difference here in the averages here, it being around 6% is actually a really good result here. So I do think they dialed in the metal structure on this thing. And that's one thing I think that they've kind of fixed. It's going to affect it a little bit depending on your situation, but I think it's super acceptable. Okay, now the next thing we wanna test here is the SSD speed here, and we're gonna do a black magic test. So look at my screen. Let's go ahead and test this out. So this is black magic with this 40 gigabit per second enclosure here and running that Evo. And let's take a look. We're up to 3,500 on the writes here and like 30, almost 3,400 on the reads. You can see right there, very, very good results on black magic. But as we always test on this channel, black magic is not always right. So we're gonna test it a little bit differently here, do the 100 gigabyte data test. 
All right, next, if you look at my screen over here, I have 100 gigabytes of data. I'm gonna transfer it over to the, you know, to the Evo drive inside of this hub over here. Obviously, I've done this earlier, but we're gonna go ahead and test this. Now, the reason I'm timing this is to see how long it takes to move the 100 gig file, and it's a bunch of files. It's actually, I think, like 20 different files that add up to 100 gigabytes for all it's worth, just for disclaimers here. But you can see this thing's really moving here. So we're at 15 seconds, and if you look up here, it's transferred, um, what is it, like 60, 70 gigabytes already. So we'll see where this ends up. Now, depending on where this ends up, we can calculate the actual speed over the 100 gigs. So as this is moving, let's just give it a couple more seconds here. And as soon as it's done, I'm gonna click done here. And we're gonna see exactly where this hash is out. So give me one second right there. So about 33.7, 33 seconds, somewhere in that range. I was maybe a little bit slow to stop it, but you can see that 33 seconds to move, you know, basically 100 gigabytes of data. And I did the math on that, obviously, and it's slightly over 3,000 megabytes per second as far as, you know, that data transfer. And if you look at that, that's really right on par with what you want to be because you're going to lose a little bit when you get up to, like, bigger transfers like that. Quicker transfers are going to be just slightly quicker. Um, but it looks like we didn't reach the cache of the drive. So one thing to note is, like, when you're buying SSDs, a lot of it has to do with the SSD that you buy, not so much the enclosure. I talked about this before, but, for example, this one terabyte, um, Samsung Evo Plus, it's got like 109 gigabyte uh, cache on it. So if we would have done more than 100 gigabytes, this thing would have slowed down, but it would not have been the fault of the enclosure, more, more of the drive. If you buy the two terabyte version, it's got over 200 gigabytes of cache. If you buy the four terabyte version, it's got a lot more. I think it's got 400 and something gigabytes of, of, of um, cache built into the SSD. So the SSD is really important here. Other thing to note here too, is this thing can take up to eight terabyte drives as well. That's actually a good thing. I forget what these were over here, but this new one over here can do eight terabytes SSDs in here. So you can get up to an eight terabyte SSD. And that's pretty huge if you want to add that to your Mac mini. I mean, imagine eight terabytes if you're paying it from Apple, it would cost you, you know, cost you a home mortgage, right? I keep saying that, but it's true. So that's actually a good thing if you want to get a lot of fast storage. Now, heat on this thing, again, this is going to get warm no matter what, no matter how you do it. What I recommend doing, though, is, you know, it depends on the drive a lot because drives get hotter depending on how fast they are and a lot of other factors. So the drive is going to make a huge difference. Go through that list. You can find, you know, obviously you do your own research on the drives. The other thing you can do is I always buy a third-party heat tape for this. Make sure the heat tape is thick enough so that the actual, you stick it on the drive here, it actually touches the top of the metal plate. It can dissipate the heat out. It'll actually, you know, it might feel a little bit hotter on the bottom, but it'll make sure that the drive runs cooler. So you have to do your own engineering here. The drive's going to matter. How you actually install the heat tape's going to matter. That's all differences that you can control. Um, so it's going to get warm. Expect that. But you can keep it from getting really, really warm if you do that right. And uh, Or, you know, with my case, I use that drive and I have the heat tape in there correctly and it worked really well. Okay, let's just wrap this up then. You can see it's actually a fairly fast SSD enclosure built into here. Finally, we get that kind of 40 gigabit per second speeds, but really you're not buying this for the ports, like I said, because it's just got those USB 2.0, you know, the USB A 2.0s on them. You might be buying it again for the back, backwards facing headphone jack, which could be a lifesaver for you. You got the stand here as well to help with cooling. You got the button on the bottom. And, uh, you know, beyond that though, like I said, it's, it's not a bad cost, right? It's gonna be on sale right now, around 89 bucks on Amazon. Definitely, I'll have a link to there and their own and the website, Quiz Labs website as well. You can check that as well. Maybe they'll have sales there. So check it all out. I mean, tell me what you guys think. I just wanted to do a quick product showcase. And again, I'm only doing it very quickly. I've had this for a week now. I can't do a long-term review for you, so you have to do your own research on that. Um, and maybe I'll do one maybe in a few months or something from now, but I just don't know, obviously, of how long this will last, if I'll have any problems in a month or so. But I just wanted to do a showcase to show people what's out there. Always do your own research before you buy something. We will talk to you in the next one. Peace.